Two hours. Two hours? Yeah. Okay. And then, two hours. and if you eat it, you get it for free. Has anybody ever beaten it before? Nope. So it's undefeated. Undefeated. How long has it been, been offered for? Uh, about a year or two. Okay. Is where they came up with it. So quite a while. Yeah. We've had a we've had a couple people get close, but just never be able to get it all the way. Hey everyone, Joel Lance here, and today we're in Brownsville, Brownsville, Kentucky, basically right by Mammoth Cave, um, which I tried to go check out. I'll have that at the end of the video. So here we're gonna do the Walden's Barbecue Mammoth Challenge, or Barbecue Challenge here, of course, at Walden's Barbecue. Um, so, really cool. This is a giant challenge, though, and I'm very scared. It's undefeated. I believe you have one hour to complete it. If not, it is $80, and if you complete it, you get a meal for free. Um, so it consists of two pounds of pulled pork. It consists of eight pieces of their pork shoulder, which are big, huge cuts. So I'm anticipating that's at least a pound. Then you either pick two pounds of meat or a half rack of ribs and a pound of meat. So again, about another two pounds, so that's at least like five, five and a half pounds of meat already. Then you have to pick three of their large sides, which is pro they're uh, over 16 ounces each. So again, we're probably looking at like already nine pounds. Then you either pick 12 pieces of bread or six rolls, which is absolutely insane. So we're talking like at least a 10 pound challenge. I'm definitely not ready for this. I had Chinese food last night, and let's just say it has not been agreeing with my bottom end. So I'm actually nervous, but wish me luck. Let's see what we can do. I do love barbecue. So uh, we're having our first Kentucky barbecue. So that's why we're doing this, Kentucky barbecue. Hopefully it's good, I'm really excited. And uh, worst case, I guess 80 bucks and we fail, but hopefully we'll win. So let's go on in, let's get some food. All right, Ron, so here we are with all the food. Definitely looks delicious. We have the uh, half rack ribs. We have the pound of turkey is what I went with, the two pounds of pulled pork. We have the eight pieces of shoulder, which are kind of like, they're cooked on a grill, like a charcoal grill. Eight rolls. We then have a massive thing of beans, a massive thing of green beans, and a massive thing of coleslaw, also their house-made sauce. So we actually have two hours to attempt this. So wish me luck, it is absolutely undefeated. It's never been completed before. So, all right everyone, so how do we get started? We'll say at the count of, well, five, four, three, two, one, let's eat. Thank you. Would you just see if that's going, my friend? This? No. Yeah, it's going. Thank you. No problem, mm -hmm. just come get some meat on it. Turkey, it's good. Very juicy. You see that? I almost was just gonna take a sip out of the sauce. I'm getting a phone call. Hopefully it's not important. All right, turkey's really good. Nice salt pepper on it. Okay. Sure there's a nice taste. It's tricky to describe it Texas style. It's definitely like a pork chop. Definitely has its own juices on it. There's a little some a little bit of sweetness in it as well. Hey everyone, welcome to this video, where today we're at Walden's Barbecue, taking on their Mammoth Barbecue Challenge. And so this uh, normal like mammoth platter is available for about eight people all the time, and then they have the challenge, if one person can do it, then you get the meal for free, and you also get a t-shirt. Um, so you did have a two hour time limit. I feel like maybe that increased, but a, a two hour time limit to complete the challenge, um, otherwise again you're facing an $80 price tag. So here, um, Walden's Barbecue is really close to Mammoth Cave. Now, if you're not familiar with Mammoth Cave, let me tell you about it. This is their mustard sauce they make. Ooh, that's good. Hey, Carolina. So Mammoth Cave is a huge series of caves um, and kind of, I guess, tunnels, I guess you could say, in this area, and that's what the area is very well known for, hence the name, the Mammoth Barbecue Challenge, named after Mammoth Cave. This is the regular sauce. Hmm. 
Hmm. I'm gonna try that again. Really unique flavor on that. I almost get like there's like a soda pop in it, like a. Like a big red or a cream soda? I'll have to ask. We're probably about three and uh, maybe a half minutes in. So for this challenge, you had again like an obligatory two pounds pulled pork. Then you had um, either uh, like two other pounds of meat, or you could substitute one for a half rack, which I did. So I had a pound of turkey. Then I had the uh, half rack of uh, baby back ribs, and then you have eight of their pork shoulder slices, they call them, or like eight of their pork shoulder pieces. But to me, I would basically just call them as pork chops. So you had eight pork chops, um, and then basically all the other meats plus all your sides. Um, there was a little bit of variety in sides, and I chose beans, coleslaw, and beans. I'll try the ribs, just see what, see what I'm going to be up against. There's a baby back. Light smoke. Definitely like a charcoal flavor on that as well. So definitely this was sitting at like a 10 pound challenge and the thing with barbecue challenges is like when they weigh them they're all cooked weights. You know if you have a, a five pound burger challenge the three pounds of meat m might have been pre-cooked. This was all post-cooked final weight. So barbecue challenges really do carry their weight. They do have quite a bit of difficulty because of that, and not to mention that often they require, well, not always, but often quite a bit of chewing, and some foods are a little more difficult than others. I'm saving the pulp for last because I'm thinking it'll be the easiest to eat. Being an undefeated challenge has definitely carried like an expert level, um, but I will say everything was tasting really nice. I do really like a barbecue, and of course, all barbecues are different, but this is my first time having barbecue in Kentucky. I don't know if this is representative for all the kind of Kentucky style barbecue, but um, for me, what I really got out of this barbecue was a light smoke. I definitely had a, a bit of a charcoal flavor on it, and then um, they were encouraging of sauces. Uh, now, I found the turkey here was done almost like a Texas style, just very simple salt pepper. Um, and then I will say the, uh, which, which I loved, I absolutely loved it. The turkey was fantastic. Um, the ribs were solid and the uh, pork shoulder pieces were actually a lot, actually really good. I really enjoyed those. Like again, just pork chops. And the sun just went behind the cloud. You see how big of a difference it made in the lighting. Pork chops cooked over charcoal, I could add. Um, and then I haven't gotten to the pulled pork, not sure if I will. So ultimately I'll have to wait to comment on that. Um, and then like I said, the, the sides. The sides are really big portions. And then like you could choose 12 pieces of bread or six buns. Um, so I went with six buns. So I went with the buns because I figured like from a strategy standpoint, that's probably the better option. Um, but then, uh, you know, I, I don't think it would have made a huge difference either way. And then um, we, they had a large variety of different sauces. They had like the house-made sauce, they had Carolina sauce. Um, so I got to try different sauces, which is really good. And you saw me almost drink, uh, try to drink one right from the bottle there. We're about like 6.45, something like that in. Ribs are gone. Two pieces of the shoulder left. about half the turkey, all the pork. There's a big bind, big, big pile. And then all the sides in the bunch. With the other sides, I think like the options I would have had would have been macaroni. They also had a fried cabbage, which I guess was a specialty. And it wasn't like a deep fried cabbage, but more like a, like grilled, not grilled, what do you call it? Like pan fried, sauteed cabbage, sauteed cabbage. There you go, there's the better word. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all the sides that I remember. Then I went again with the baked beans, green beans, um, dipping those uh, pork chops, the pork shoulders in the sauce there, making them very, very delicious. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much all the information I have for you, at least at this moment. 
Um, you know, like we said, two hours to complete this 10 pound barbecue challenge, undefeated. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to come the first winner, but ultimately let's tune on in, see what happens. And uh, yeah, Kentucky, Kentucky barbecue. So let me know guys, what's your favorite barbecue item here? I think mine on this time, well, at least what I got to try so far was the, hmm. No, you know what? I'm going to have to wait. I'll tell you later. Let me know down below what your favorite is right now. All right, let's try this pulled pork. Very rich. I don't think you can see all the juices on here, but lots of juice. Very good turkey breast though. Woo! A lot of food. Yeah, the barbecue sauce is a really interesting taste. Like I said, it also reminds me of a soda pop. Just over 10 minutes. Put pork, everything. Whew. Maybe I'll try a bite of this just to change it up a little bit. Coleslaw. Wow. That is a very, very wettened coleslaw. Ooh, still good hiccups. It's good though. I need to get rid of those hiccups though. Ooh. Try the beans. Beans are exactly what you'd expect. And I'm gonna try the baked beans. They're good. Yep. Yeah. Man, those hiccups. I'm trying to get rid of that, but all right. And if you made it to this point in the video, first off, thank you so much for watching and not skipping ahead. I really appreciate all your support. And um, But now let's play one of our jokes on the skippers. Basically, we're going to comment something down below. And when they read the comments, they're going to have to try to find in the video where this event happened. So how about comment down below, hey, Joel, nice tattoos, or something along those lines. Have fun with it. Let's just say I got some new tattoos. And uh, hey, thank you so much for participating, and thank you for watching. By the way, this platter is meant to feed like six or eight people. It's definitely good, but it's a heavy, heavy, heavy pulled pork. It must have been sitting in like a like container, and they totally got that bottom on it. Lots of juices. Yeah, I want to try to show you how many, how much, like the amount of juices that are on this tray. I don't know if you can see that just running. There is uh, no shortage. All right. Whew. Done with that. Get on some of these sides. Probably about 
maybe 15, 20, 15, 30. Boy, oh boy. Beans and beans and buns. Beans and buns. Buns. Oh, all right. Here we go. Seventeen something in it. Buttery beans. Ooh. All right, baked beans. All right, just down on the rolls. Probably 21 and a half minutes in. Woo! Like I said, I'm freezing. I got some uh, pumping and AC in here, that's for sure. Excuse me. Mm. And I Dr. Pepper. I haven't had a Dr. Pepper in a long, long, long time. Probably almost a year. September of We're done. That's somewhere around 2320. I don't know the exact time, just kind of going by my time around my camera. But very good. Overall, really enjoyed it. Um, turkey was fantastic. I give an extra huge thank or shout out to the turkey. It was Texas style turkey. I love Texas style barbecue. Just salt pepper, but incredibly moist. They definitely do that breast very well. Nice smoky flavor, but uh, very, very delicious. Uh, pulled burger is really good as well. Very, very heavy though. Um, but yeah, it was all really good. No complaints. Um, sides were great. Coleslaw was very creamy. Uh, so that would do get meal for free, which is pretty cool, and uh, it's officially defeated. Got some looks of uh, one, one guy has his mouth half open, and the other guy gave me a thumbs up. So I think it's a, I think it's a good thing. But everyone, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. With that, that's about it. If you're in the area, stop on by. Walden's really cool, especially if you're ever at the uh, Mammoth Cave. Top on over. And I mean, they do have this Mammoth Platter. I'd maybe recommend sharing it with that like six to eight people. But nonetheless, very good, very delicious. I think we might get a sweet t-shirt as well. Um, so with that, till next time everybody, just, that's about it. Have a lovely day. And here we got the sweet t-shirt. I conquered the Mammoth Walden's barbecue. And 
Yeah, challenge. Woohoo! Congrats. Thank you, thank you. I can't either. Sure. Is there, are you like a YouTuber? So here I tried to go to Mammoth Cave, which is definitely one of the uh, most known sites in the area. However, unfortunately, they were sold out of tickets. And in fact, they were sold out for a week, like a week in advance. So I was able to check out the grounds and the little museum they had there, but I wasn't able to go in the actual cave. So here's what I saw. So interesting enough, the Pass of the Ways of Mammoth Cave are the world's largest known cave system. They cover hundreds, yes, hundreds of miles, um, although they don't stretch in a straight line, but intersect and run above and below other big ones, like the shallow platter of spaghetti. And just kind of give an idea, here's the visitor center. Here is the Mammoth Cave Plateau, so pretty impressive. So while we can't go in the cave because we don't have a tour, this is the little um, museum that they have here. So it covers a little bit of the geology, a little bit of the history. Um, so this is about as close as I think we're going to get today, but they have some rotating pictures of, I would assume, be insects and stuff that's had around. That must be in the cave itself, which looks very impressive. Obviously they have a fake rock wall here. So the labyrinth uh, says for generations, guides have led tours in the Mammoth Cave um, for many years. The guide house was based on operations. Uh, yeah, anyway, the, there you go. So they got like, talking about the underground journeys, the longest cave, above and beyond. So here we got Sinkhole Plain, an underground journey began. So how was Mammoth Cave formed? Limestone caves like Mammoth Cave are formed by the water acting on rock over a very long time. South Central Kentucky perfectly combines these factors to form long cave systems. As rain and snow fall on the sinkhole plain south uh, and east of the park, the underground journey begins. Raindrops begin picking up carbon dioxide as they fall through the air and work their way through the soil. So acid rain basically eroding the rocks. Um, now that the water is highly acidic, it just slowly dissolves the rocks and it seeps through the cracks and layers and beneath the soil eventually creates these great big cave systems and plateaus kind of like this and uh, yeah that's pretty much it which is pretty interesting kind of reminds me of like a cenote kind of thing happening uh, cenote in mexico obviously though here we're just calling it kind of a cave um and here it talks about sinkholes and streams and yeah that's kind of what a cenote was cenote is kind of like a sinkhole so it seems like that's kind of what's going on here. So here it's talking about sinkholes, so you can actually kind of see them. They look like little uh, little dimples. And if you touch the light, there it goes, it shows all of them. So that's pretty unique, actually. Um, and then obviously the sinkholes are formed by the underground erosion, which eventually transforms into a cave. And here's kind of like the stream running underground. Uh, you can see it light up, kind of giving an example of how it would create um, a sinkhole plane. Pretty unique. And does water flow uphill? Um, interesting. Just flowing water. And then this kind of explains um, essentially why there's like only certain big cave systems uh, versus actually being everywhere just falling you know disintegrating because underneath our feet because the sandstone there's a sandstone layer on top and this protects the erosion from happening but it's when the water habitually gets through that it creates uh, ultimately the erosion of these caverns pretty interesting and then it's talking about um so when pangea existed you know the theory that all the continents and the earth was all combined um they're saying that uh kentucky actually laid in the tropics then just south of the equator which really kind of makes sense because they're finding uh, brachiopods they're finding horn corals and strange sharks and um that kind of their shells and everything in actually Mammoth Caves limestone layers. So pretty interesting how that all, you know, turns and, and interacts. Pretty, pretty phenomenal to think about. So there's actually uh, over 27 known entrances, but one third are natural. The half light, half dark of these entrances is called a twilight zone. And what's really interesting about them is they have changing air temperatures, humidity, and light. 
um, which kind of reflects and alters the cave's constant temperature, humidity, and darkness. So you kind of have the mix of the consistency of the inside of the cave meeting with the outside of the cave and trying to transferring it. And then similarly, as the water goes down, it just keeps continuing moving down through the caves, down into the earth, to which that's why you end up with these big dry areas entering the caves and it's not just all full of water because it just keeps habitually going down and tracking and tracking, which is pretty interesting. And then, you know, there is a present, you know, kind of stream and water table, but just keep going down and down. So what's pretty cool is there's a series of uh, like uh, blind animals, um, but also other animals like bats and raccoons. But, you know, for example, they have like eyeless cave fish, um, cave beetles and stuff, um, all which are very well versed to their environment. Again, very similar to a cenote. Basically, this seems to be a American version of a cenote. Here touches on a number of the other um, eyeless animals. So you have like cave shrimp, which are sightless, um, but then you also have like again, northern cave fish, which again are sightless. You have um, amphipods, but then you also have like these crawfish, which again, cave crawfish, again, eyeless, very interesting. What's really cool is that it actually has photosensitive cells in its tail, so it can detect light. So like, just to have you know, just an idea of just how complex, you know, animal and this the world really is. Um, you know, for example, the shrimp live in the lowest levels of the cave, very difficult to study them. Um, just like, yeah, crazy. And then like actual sizes. So as of October, 2017, it was 412 miles long. Um, they think that there is, um, more than uh, 600 miles undiscovered. It talks about uh, American Indians' torches, which is pretty cool. They carried torches to explore the area. There's foot tracks left like more than 2,000 years ago. And again, just apparently it takes 10 to 12 hours to actually get to unexplored areas of the cave. We're just trying to give you an idea of how vast this is. What's really cool is it talks about um, the first peoples. So we have like the indigenous individuals um, exploring the cave and the showing that they ventured, you know, like 5,000 to 2,200 years ago. So that's like basically when they found. Interestingly, there's no evidence um, shown of uh, later use and they don't know why, it's kind of a mystery. But in there they found things like a worked muscle shell that would be like used as a scoop a projectile point um, that would be, you know, like for an arrow or something. Um, they figured it was. Uh... Then they have a, a pottery bowl from like 2,600 years ago. They have a bone drill. Slippers have been found in the cave. Torches have been found in the cave. Um, a gourd bowl. So yeah, like pretty, pretty impressive. Um, it's pretty shocking to think about and just that like how again big and expansive this is and this is really interesting they're saying that um, people have actually been touring mammoth cave for like two centuries like 200 years so that's pretty uh that's pretty incredible incre crazy to think about i mean you know there's some i mean this one's always uh drawn but there's like an old picture that looks like a real old picture you know people exploring and navigating so definitely interesting and that was kind of the uh, Mammoth Cave uh, tour. So as I mentioned, tried to check out Mammoth Cave. Of course, didn't really turn out that well. But that being said, we can, uh, there's lots of tour, like trails around. So I'm gonna walk towards this way. This is uh, towards the historic entry point. This is actually the entry point, the entrance to Mammoth Cave, which they use. Uh, so we'll be able to at least see it from the outside. We won't be able to go in. And then there is a number of different trail systems which cover sinkholes, um, overlook like uh, outlook thingy things and uh, just a whole bunch of stuff so we're gonna see a little something something made out here and uh it's definitely uh, a beautiful day look at this look at this greenery definitely some beautiful kentucky countryside so here's the actual entrance to the cave. Hopefully, I was gonna turn this up, you can see there, there you go. See down here, like you can, there you go, you can actually see the entry of the cave. There's some water 
obviously flowing, but this thing is gigantic. And what's interesting, again, they call those like the twilight zones, which regulate the temperature and conditions inside. What's absolutely shocking right now is when I was 10 feet this way, it was like, let's say 80 degrees. Right here, just because like, I guess the draft or the air, whatever coming from that cave, it's prob it probably feels like 55. It's a crazy actually, the temperature difference uh, and that's, you know, or how the cave regulates that. Really interesting, but yeah, really reminds me of like a cenote. So that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Pretty impressive. And here we are along the Green River Bluffs. Let's just say the Green River is, or green river is no longer green. A little more brown, but very beautiful green along the sides of it. That is definitely for sure. The sides of the trees are just magnificent. You can you know, canoe down the, down the river, which would be a lot of fun. Yeah, this is expansive and you guys definitely can't tell like, but like this is, these are huge. Absolutely giant. Very impressive. And here you have a tree. And then look at the size of this tree. This is ginormous. These are some big, huge trees. I think the gentleman said they were sycamore trees. These things are girthy. Like, I can only imagine how old they must be. They are huge, 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 huge trees. I mean, not saying anybody would ever want to do it, but you ever want to make a boat or get some lumber for your house? You just need one of these trees. This is just like, this is giant. The camera does not do this justice, but like, you know, that's like 10 inches maybe. Absolutely insane. Crazy. And here we have Dixon Cave. Again, something you just can't understand from the camera, how large this is. This is a very, 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 very large crevice. And uh, interestingly enough, they're saying that uh, Dixon Cave likely once was attached to Mammoth Cave, but there was a collapse. So now it's just a kind of more shallow dead end. So yeah, pretty cool, very unique. And this is a more like actual official overview of the Green River. It's apparently the longest in Kentucky flowing 370 miles. Um, but again, if you can see, the Green River is definitely not green. <laughs> it's definitely brown, but obviously it's just, you know, because the dirt's all kicked up. I'm sure normally it's nice and green and pleasant looking. Pretty cool. All right, everyone, in the last part of kind of this mammoth cave kind of area we're gonna see, um, which is a like internet, like something heritage site, international, blah, 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 um, is the Cedar Sink Trail. Yes, the Cedar Sink Trail. So when I asked the ladies in the, like the park rangers at the actual information center by uh, Mammoth Cave itself, they said, um, do like the Green Bluffs walk, which we did. Um, and we linked it up with the other trail beside it. I forgot, I had the map. So basically the Cedar Bluffs was like, I don't know, maybe like two kilometers, a mile and a half. And if you linked it up, it came about five. So that's what we did. We did kind of that whole rim um, video, what you saw. And then here we have the Cedar Sink Trail. This was the uh, one lady's personal favorite. Um, so from my understanding, um, it's perhaps the most dramatic surf expression of the cave bearing landscape of Mammoth Cave National Park. Um, I guess you see like a lip of the depression, basically a sinkhole. And um, yeah, you get to start to see a glimpse of the underground river system. So pretty cool. Um, that's what it looks like. So we're going to go walk and loop and uh, should be good. It is evening it's starting to kind of set and dim a little bit, but um, should be fun. So let's go uh, check out this walk. So after a long foresty walk through the woods, um, like I said, surprisingly dark. Um, this is technically, so if you're not familiar, Kentucky has two time zones. And while, you know, like sometimes, you know, if you cross like a state line, uh, you know, maybe go to a different country, it kind of makes sense that there's two time zones. Well, Kentucky basically like Louisville is in Eastern and then just like 30 minutes, southwest or whatever is in central so this is central and it's about 7 30 central so 8 30 eastern so i'm 
you know, I'm thinking basically based on my Eastern whatever, we probably have about one hour left of daylight per se, but with how heavy treed and shaded this is, and again, wherever the sun is setting, I don't know if it's behind a big hill or whatnot, um, it definitely is getting quite dark. Um, so we'll definitely make sure we keep the uh, pace up. We do have two paths. Um, it says 0.5 mile loop or mile loop. So we'll find out. But uh, yeah, so I think we should be getting to the sinkhole soon. Again, we just kind of descend it on some stairs. So we will find out here momentarily. All right, we are definitely more getting there now. Again, a lot more descending stairs. Definitely a bit of a drop going all the way, all the way down there. So yeah, I think we're uh, getting really, really close now. Right down here. All right, and this little bit right here, like I guess what would be that, which is dried up, like see the stream? It looks dried up or mostly, I think it's dried up or at least pretty dry at this point. I do hear a trickle of water. Not sure if you guys can hear that. I think it's maybe a little bit right, right, right there, kind of by the dam. But anyway, this is um, the small body of water below us is a short section of the much larger Hawkins Logsdon underground river system. Um, the river has traveled for tens of miles before surfacing here at Cedar Sink and disappears again at the foot of the bluff to continue its journey to the Green River at the Turns Hole Bend, which we kind of saw that Green River earlier. Um, the sink is uh, important for the underground ecosystem. Here we have organic materials being washed into the cave, providing energy and a source of nutrient star for the nutrient starved ecosystem. And again, in the actual caves itself and the underground water, we have like, for example, like the cave fish and the uh, Kentucky cave shrimp, which are blind critters. Um, and then I guess, so this, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you should be able to see this on the camera. You can kind of see how like this, again, what's dried up now, this is normally obviously uh, water and it would then travel kind of underwater and uh or underground and then here's the picture if you can see into the rock where you have it the water passing in through the um, you know the covered area just through this little path and back under again which would be from over there down the stream and here so yeah a little dried up now although actually there you go that is that's officially that officially right where's my finger right there that's a little puddle of water so there you go, pretty cool. That's uh, the Hawkins Logsdon River, and I guess this is technically the Cedar Sink. So we'll, uh, I don't know if there's any more to it, but we'll have a peek. This is a really cool lookout, if you can see. Um, I'll show you from like far away, but it's literally in the rocks, uh, overlooking what again I think normally is water down there. But just look at this rock ledge. Big, huge rock ledge, which obviously has been carved out by I'm assuming water and whatever. So there's a little drip going on right here. You do have a puddle. Try to get over that. But yeah, here's a little lookout. And like right here, right here, is a big thing of limestone. And then again, I assume that all this is carved out probably by the water over the however many millions or thousands of years. And yeah, this is really unique. And then just to kind of give you a perspective, here I am, here's the rock literally right above my head. And then just like this big major rock cliff. So basically what is over there, I'm like just, I'm standing under like, you know, a continuation of this. So pretty crazy. Yeah, this is a, this is a very unique walk. Um, not at all what I was expecting. I think the actual, what they called the cedar sink itself was a little lackluster. But I am definitely finding some very interesting, like this is even just this path. Look at this. It's like a vined rock cliff. This is not a very wide path. You could definitely not fit two people side by side here. Um, like, at all. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. Definitely unique. And down there is just like the cedar sink. So let's, uh, I think we're kind of on the other side of the loop. We're just kind of continuing around. Um, and so I imagine that this trail links up where we saw the split earlier. But yeah, definitely cool. Um, I'm assuming that's the majority of kind of the sights to be seen in here. I obviously don't know 100% for sure. And there was another little path. I took it 
um, just very briefly. It was, uh, it led to like another little lookout kind of like that over what was also appeared to be a dried up kind of piece of normally stream or moving water. But yeah, pretty unique. So I think that's all. I'm going to head on back. We are, again, it's getting a little dark out. So don't recommend being out in the woods alone in the dark. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this little view of Cedar Sink Trail. We have some stairs. We are heading uphill as we speak. Um, but that's pretty much that. If they're, well, hold on. Let's see what this lookout brings. I was gonna say, I'm assuming that's all the interesting stuff, but that's quite a stairwell. And here we have another point, which says a karst window. Cedar sink is a karst window. A sinkhole where a subterranean river emerges, providing a view into a much larger hydrologic system. Much of the water flowing through the Mammoth Cave underground streams originates, originates in the basins of the depression riddled sinkhole plain to the southeast. So, again, that's the sinkhole down there. All the way down there. You see it all dried up. And we're just directly above it. And it gives a window at the water on its way to one of the hidden streams um, and it resurfaces for a short time. So that's pretty cool. A karst window. And again, if you can see in the rock, that's what it looks like. It's coming through the rock, out a little bit, and back in. And to give an idea of the sinkhole plane, underground to Cedar Sink, and further on into the Mammoth Cave, which is right there, Mammoth Cave. It's a little worn out, but Mammoth Cave. Ooh, pretty cool. All right, I'm assuming that's all now. I don't know, but if not, hope you enjoyed. Definitely cool area, would recommend checking it out. Again, what I didn't realize, I figured like, oh yeah, 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 like, Maybe the two, maybe a, a, you know, like let's say the two o'clock tour would be sold out, but then I could get on like the 2.15 or the 2.30. No, like I said, Mammoth Cave tours, every single one, which there's like a variety of them, were all sold out for one week. Like literally a week, it's Tuesday today, they were sold out till next week. So if you're coming, book in advance. I definitely will have to book again for the future because I would definitely recommend it. I really want to see it. Um, yeah, they have like self-guided tours. They have uh, tours that focus on the history of it. They have tours that, um, I don't know what it's called. Hold on, the lighting will be better here in a second. Uh, I don't know the exact name of it, but basically one where you actually like get muddy per se. Uh, you get covered in mud because you're walking through not just the really well, mm, let's say paved, or well not paved, paved, you know, the really well walked or usual route. You're kind of going a little bit more of a, mm, what do they call it? Like caver, caver's route, it was just saying. Um, so yeah, they have like a whole bunch of different ones. Or even as a self-guided tour, which basically you just have like an allotted time and you can go in certain areas of the cave um, with no additional history and stuff. But yeah, so definitely book in advance. That was something big in the tree. But uh, book in advance and have yourself a cool time. I'm definitely, like I said, I'll have to come back, Mammoth Cave, and I will bring you guys with me whenever I do. So with that, have a lovely evening, everybody. I appreciate you. I appreciate you watching. Let me know down below if you liked this, kind of seeing the sights in the areas that I visit, and uh, let me know how your day's going. Mine's going pretty good. I can't complain. Been busy. I'm doing some crazy stuff, but uh, very thankful. I'm blessed. So thank you guys. I appreciate you, and have a lovely night. So here we have a little bit of the Kentucky wildlife. The only other th animals I saw earlier besides like birds and a turkey was I saw a little baby snake that was black with a yellow stripe on it. And here's a big spider. You see there? I know you can't really tell, but that thing is like, it's very large. Let me see, like, like it is very, very, very big. Like I wouldn't even want to step on it. He would leave a mark. It's probably about, uh, almost two inches across, about two inches. So there you go, Kentucky got some big spiders. Those who like spiders, I mean, again, it's not like, not like that, that, that big, but big enough where, you know, you see a two inch thing the size of a mouse running across you, you definitely notice it. Um, and then like I said, it's a little, little black snake, um, all black with 
a singular yellow stripe on it around its neck. That was uh, earlier though when we were at Bluffs, um, but that was like, it was very, very, very small. But if I had to guess, and if anybody knows what kind of snake that is, all black, like jet black, like single yellow band right behind its head. I'm going to guess it probably could have been dangerous just because, I don't know, it looked, it looked, it looks like it could have been dangerous. So, I like snakes though, but I mean, you know, I wouldn't poke and play with random snakes out in the wild, I'll put it that way. Be safe, kids.